certain word in the course of long view gather so many barnacles of collocation that they always cease to mean anything at all. Then the only thing to do is to scrape off the barnacle. Such a word is pure, but pure in heart. For they shall see God. When you read it, with the present meaning that were attached to the word, you wonder which is the more difficult. The condition imposed upon man to see God or seeing God. And that is not the meaning of the word pure. The Greek word translated pure means clear, open, free, unlimited. It is used for a tract of land that has been cleared of tree. Therefore, free, unobstructed, and well, unlimited. Blessed are they whose mental horizon has been so heard, so clear of the tree of traditional wrong thinking, that they know that God is all and all is God. They are now free from the tyranny of second cause. You do not have to work upon yourself to become pure, to see God. In other words, a pure heart is the consequence, not the condition of seeing God. The moment you see God, your heart is purified of all secondary causes, and you can turn to the left or the right or to anything in this world for you have found the only source of the phenomena of life. Now, the word see, or this is taken from the Greek, the word see and to know are the same word in Greek. If I, if I am pure in heart, and only if I am pure in heart, I will see God. And yet in the same gospel, I am told that no one has ever seen God. The only son who is in the bosom of the father, he has made him known. Then I am told, no one knows the son except the father. And no one knows the father except the son. And anyone to whom the son chooses to reveal him. You can take the word see and know, and they're interchangeable. No one has ever seen God. No one knows God. But the Son, who is in the bosom of the Father, He has made Him know. I then tell you the thrill and the shock He restored for you when you are revealed as God. I could tell you from now to the ends of time, and I cannot persuade you to the point of real conviction. It takes the sun to convince you. And when the sun stands before you, everything is done. At that moment, you for the first time know God. And you see him only by knowing him, because the see and to know are the same in Greek. Now you really know who God is when he stands before you, and even before he calls you bother. You have no doubt in your mind as to who he is and what you're looking at. You know your son. At that very moment, you know God. And not before. You might have heard it, you might have read it, but you are not persuaded to the point of real inner conviction until you know it in this manner. So no one knows who the son is except the father. And no one knows who the Father is except the Son. And anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. And if the Son sets you free, you are free indeed. And only the Son can set you free. And so when he comes, and he will come, 
that the whole vast world rise in opposition to what I'm telling you. It makes no difference to me whatsoever. I know. I've experienced. I fall on a thrill and what a shock. When you go to bed perfectly normally as a simple man and have an experience of this nation, suddenly you are startled. You, your simple little being that you are, you are God, but you can't deny it. It comes to the portal, and he would have no other father. You are his father. And when you have it, then you and I must be one. And when the whole vast world has it, we must be a unity. We must see that unity, spoken of in Scripture as the Elohim, that compound unity, one made up of others, the whole vast world, will know God. So that this seeing God, based upon the purity of heart, is not something that you go, you set about to do. I can't conceive of any man in this world actually persuading himself by changing of this and changing of that that he is pure of heart. When he is living in the world of Caesar, where everything here dies and things are always in turmoil, that he would actually judge himself emotionally or in any other way mentally as pure, as he calls the word pure. But your instinct free of all obstruction as the secondary cause, the minute the Son reveals you as God the Father. So I say it is consequent. It is not the condition of seeing God. And for the many he stands before you, instantly, that whole vast wonderful world of yours is cleared of all obstruction. Now you know what Catrotter means. So we use the word as a purge in our world. We speak of a catharsis. That's the root of the word. The purge to open, to set free, to completely leave open a shell so there's no obstruction whatsoever. Not one tree can stand in its way. And so when this crack is completely cleared, and it's cleared the minute you see David, at that moment, there is no other call. And until that moment, I turn to this, to that, and to the other, these secondary causes, I live in a horrible faith, for that is the greatest simile of the world, the belief in secondary cult. So here, the word pure, let no one frighten you, that you've got to set about to purify yourself, as the world thinks that is pure. But who knows the secrets of a man, but the spirit of a man? So who can look at a man and say he's a pure man? How does he know he's a pure man? By his standard of purity, no man is, including himself. But by scriptural standard, the minute you see David, and David reveals you as God the Father, then all the trees, all the obstructions, everything in your world that came between you and self disappear, and you're the only cause of the phenomena of your life. And you go through life now, simply bring it into your world, the thing that you would like to entertain in your world. No matter how difficult it seems to be, you see it, you know there's only one cause, and so you're going to rearrange the thing you see. You don't throw it away. You don't discard it. You rearrange it, and your lines are you re-photograph the image. I re-photograph the image, and let life develop that negative and produce it on the screen of space, and it will. So here, blessed are the soaring heart that fix the attitude which seems so difficult to most people to interpret. I haven't found one interpretation in Scripture, or the commentaries, I haven't found one, that will go back to the root and show us exactly what it is. I have what is considered the grandfather of all interpretation, which is the interpreter's Bible. They do not touch it. They will admit it's the most difficult of the Beatitude, this fixed one. But they can't touch it. Unless you go back to the link, unless you have the actual experience of what it means to actually purify and take all the trees out of man's mind, purify the mind, and it can't be done until he stands before you. And you know, without any doubt, 
who you really are. When you know who you are, there is no secondary cause, none whatsoever. And then comes the vision. Here my wife gave me a vision two months ago. There was no occasion to tell it, but it would fit. It's that we were in this fantastic, magnificent, enormous apartment in a pattern. I think was a gateway into a new way. But the age in which we were for the police say, and we were constantly being fit, but we were not molested. We were completely free, not one little bit ever happened to us. But this palatial flay with a full comfortable servant. And while the vision lasted, he seemed to know these people. The servants in the kitchen, the servants in the other areas of the enormous apartment, the butler, the private secretary, all seemed to know us and we knew them. But our position was the gateway into freedom from the place of complete slavery, right behind the Iron Curtain. And when the searchers came, they came and our guests, we always entertained guests for dinner. Not more than six, therefore they made eight of us, she and I, and the six who came as our guests. And I would explain to them the way of escape. I would tell them the one and only way is to freedom. But strangely enough, as I was telling them about the way into freedom, they were already simultaneously at that moment, I am telling them, and they were already at their destination. Here was the strangest experience here. You are explaining to them the way of salvation, the way of freedom. And yet at that moment, they were already, although physically present before us, they were already at their destination. And when these people came to investigate all the searches, They'd been be left and went to their quarters, their room, behind these paddle doors and these tapestries. And they never touched us, but they came and they never found anyone. No one could ever touch anyone who came. But, and strangely enough, she said, as it all took place so naturally, I knew that it was all organized and actually directed from above that we were the gateway explaining the way. But from above, everything was organized, and there it was directed. For anyone who came to us for the escape was brought to us by those who directed the whole thing from above. Here is a true picture. No one comes unto me save my father calling, though I and my father are one. For that depth of my own being is not that the conscious truth of mine know who he is calling and when he is calling. Really, would he let me know that this one is coming and he comes in a month, he comes sometimes in a year. But they will tell when to expect it. But normally I am not advised as to when, but the one who would speak it all is my own being, is from the depths of my own soul, who is telling me. And he will come, or she will come, or they will come. And sometimes they are even late in the coming. But the father is not wrong, because man sin is free, not to come. In my own case, Clay, a friend of mine who was just one year short, of graduating from Fordham University as a Catholic priest. He inherited two million dollars and proceeded to lose the entire thing in one year on Wall Street. All that he say was some beautiful paintings that his father left him, and an old, old, old packet. The old packet car, he just burned the fee up. But when he would sleep on the far bench because he had no money, he paid ten dollars a month rent, storage for the car to be out of the weather. But he lost his two million dollars because he did that. But he told me he met a man that I would enjoy meeting. And this man, he thinks, would like to meet me. He thinks we had much in common. Well, because he told me I wouldn't go near the man. I postponed going near my friend Abdullah for six months. And then I ran out of excuse if I had no other excuse to give him. And this Sunday night, I said, all right, Dave, I'll go with you. 
and so I went with it. I came through the door and sat, took the first chair, and the meeting had just begun. And Abdul broke the meeting as he started to talk to those who were present. He broke the meeting and he came over to me and called me by name. He said, Neville, you are late. You are six months late. And I said to him, well, I have never seen you before and I had no appointment to see you. So how could I be six months late? He said, the brothers told me you were coming. And to expect you. And that's six months ago. Well, it was six months ago. And I postponed it and postponed it and postponed it because I had no trust in his judgment of anything that would interest me. Because the man in my eyes was a failure, a complete failure. And I judged by appearances. And he tried to get me to come to meet a man that really was very influential in my life. So I know from my own experience when it actually happened to me. Since someone is coming into my world, I know. And they are too late today. They may have certain little barriers that are free to overcome. But the real overcoming of all the three is when it is revealed to you what you really are. Then all the things that obstructed your view up to that moment, they vanish completely. So that it is not something you've got to make happen in order to see God. Seeing God removes all the tree. Therefore, this so-called pure heart is the consequence, not the condition of seeing God. So let me read in Scripture that no one has ever seen him. Only the sun reveals him. It's true. I can see I am. I can see I am as manifestation. I see the necessity of the creative imagination clothing itself in concepts of itself. And I can see myself clothed in concepts of myself. For in scripture speak of deity. Then should he rise and anoint him. And then the Spirit of God came mightily upon David from that day forward. What does it mean? He's clothed with David. But then who is David? You are David. You're doing the will of your father. He'll put you through all the furnaces of affliction because he cannot give his glory to another. How can I give my glory to another? He can give it to another. He has to make it. You himself. And so he clothed himself with David, as he clothed himself with Gideon. He clothed himself with you, and you are doing the will of your father. So I have found in David, the son of Jesse, which is I am, a man after my own heart who will do all my will. You are doing your father's will. Everything that you have imagined, you are doing it. And when you look into the world and you don't like what you are seeing, don't, maybe you haven't cleared it yet, because you have completely cleared of obstruction until you know God. When you know him, because the soil reveals him, then you know God and you have no obstruction. Until then, there's still secondary causes. And you would say, well, he did it, or she did it, or they did it. All the conditions did it. Today we have a bad depression. We have a recession. We have unemployment. And so we turn to all these secondary causes for our present recession or failure. And it isn't that at all. Someone is ill, and they blame a condition. It's not the thing at all. I can tell you of numberless things that would contradict completely the findings of so-called science today, and blaming this, that, or the other for a certain effect. And I could turn to just as many on the opposite side, who never did the things that they claim you must do in order to have the effect, and they ask, then why? Why does this happen? To this crowd will never subject itself to the test that you are given, and yet they have the same effect. We are emotional filters, and we bear the mark of our prevalent emotion. So what is that prevalent emotion that you and I are entertaining morning or the night? I can entertain the limitation of failure. For I can even get into a strange cycle, so that at every season of the year, at a certain season, it could be spring, summer, autumn, winter where things seem to go down. As year after year, they will go down. No matter what I have in the spring, if the winter is when it goes down, it'll go down, if I don't get out of that title. And I believe that simply 
in some tree that is not yet removed. On the other hand, at least encourage you. You can't remove it by taking thought. You can't remove it by working on yourself. You'll remove it that day when David stands before you. And may I tell you, he will stand before you. And we won. He will stand before. And when he stands before you, and you know that he is your son, you know who you are. For David is the son of God. There is no other son of God. If you read the scripture correctly, but when you know how to read scripture, you will see that when these fifty evangelists, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and they're all anonymous, nay, when they wrote their gospel, they were not writing biography. They were writing theology. They were not writing textual history. They were writing the history of redemption. It's all the difference in the world. Men not knowing this, they'll read it in the secular history. And they'll think, here is the biography of a man called Jesus. The whole story of Jesus, from his birth through his ascension into heaven, is that those who understand who they are, a sign, a sign granted by God to those who will receive it. But the sign of God's wonderful redemptive activity were not the signs that Israel was expecting. Therefore, they completely rejected it. They would not accept it when I tell you this is what it is. You are born from above, and you're born in this manner. And you rise from the grave, and the grave is your own wonderful thing. It's your own skull. Then, if you don't believe that because of the creeds of false teaching, well, then you'll reject it and tell you the truth. But if you've been conditioned through these traditional wrong creating, these trees must then be removed. I could think to take a few out, but they will not all go until that vast one when David stay and confirm all that I tell you. To so all that I have told you and all that I will continue to tell you is simply in scripture, but it is not biography. It's theology. It's simply the knowledge of God. And God's way of redemption, that's the entire story. But if I take it as the world takes it as biography and simply secular history, well, then I miss the point completely. So, you will see God. And when you see him, you will stay within your heart, for I didn't think myself qualified. For you don't feel any chain. You're so capable of a violent act the very next day if someone should injure the one you love. If someone that very night injured my daughter, my wife, or those that I love, I am quite capable of the most violent act, and yet I am free of these creeds of traditional wrong thinking. And that means I am pure in her, but I make no claim to the purity based upon man's concept of purity. Has a thing to do with any purity as the world thinks it. He turned to the harlot and says that the one who has no sin, let him cast the first though. And from the oldest to the youngest, they all left, because none felt within themselves good enough to cast the stone. Because the interpreter of the entire story as a psychological story is if you love to ask for a person, well, the act has already been committed. You may restrain the impulse, but he tells you that isn't good enough. But then who on the third could stand before me and tell me he's never had the impulse? Unless he would cast straight into the kind he was born, and then he doesn't even know, so he could restrain nothing. He has nothing to restrain. If he was removed at birth from the possibility of lusting, but if he was not removed at birth from that possibility, then he would stand before me and tell me that he is never lusty. And I would say, well, you're a liar. As far as I'm concerned, you're a liar, whether you be male or female. And so that you've never had the impulse to get even. Don't tell me you haven't. Don't tell me you haven't had the impulse and still are capable of the impulse to hurt if someone to hurt the one you love more than you love your own self. And yet, you are pure in heart to day you see David. For the minute you see him, you know, the whole back world has collapsed as far as you are concerned. The whole thing has collapsed. And now you no longer can turn to this, that, and the other and blame it or praise it for anything that's happening in your world. You are simply within yourself, your God, the healer. You are the God, creating 
going bad and a dip it in your world. A friend of mine in the audience tonight, he said, I have this very, very big uh, drink. My wife and I, and here we are, and the world is coming to an end. The whole thing is coming to an end. It began to shake. A wind, the unearthly wind came up, and then the rain like a flood, and then the earth is shaking. And I said to myself, while well, the earth has gone out of orbit. I wasn't afraid of death, and my wife, she wasn't afraid of death. But I thought the whole thing was simply coming apart and coming to an end. That's a wonderful adoration. Read it in the 13th chapter of Mark. Read it in Matthew. You see these buildings? Not one stone will be left standing upon the other, but it will be turned down. That's when the son of man has come. That's the end of the age. Well, in your case, you had a most wonderful adumbration. And you're not given the adumbration when you're far removed from the actual event. If this thing happens to you, you watch for it. It's coming. This is going to be a foreshadowing. Here, not altogether. I would conclusively know the way you saw it. But when it happened, when the whole thing collapsed, and the idea by which you lived in the past, you no longer can live by them. You just can't live by them. Nothing external, the whole thing is internal. The whole drama of life is a psychological drama. And now you know it. So your vision is perfectly marked, perfectly wonderful. Others are finding themselves interwoven in their life. Two and three and four together, all interwoven. There's though this thing has been going on and going on. Oh, but, oh, but again, it has been going on. Before the world was, we were one, and yet individualized. We were brothers, greatly in love, and love beyond the wildest dream of man. And we deliberately and purposely came down into this world, Apollo, for a purpose. And as the poet said, where we are so curious about, why are we here? He said, be patient. Our playwright will show in some fifth act what this wild drama means. So here we have it in four acts, like the four corners of the universe. Wait, the station, in some fifth act, he's going to show what the wild drama means. And it will be beyond the wildest dream of man, the glory that comes out of the horror to which we go there. The most fast to it. You and I had read the dream in comfort, and we haven't violated that fate. We still dream in comfort. So we can share the same room, share the same event, see them a little bit differently because through different eyes, but the same event. You see it's just a little shade differently. So when you read scripture, don't take anything for granted. For with simple little statement, I've heard so many ministers from the fullest take that thick free attitude, and they may, well, the strangest thing about it, they've frightened the people to death. But they went through their door after the service, and they wondered how on earth would I ever see God. For they knew in the depth of their soul, if they had to be sure, as he thought that that what you had to be, well, then you could never see God. But you'll never see him, say you see him through the time, because you are spirit. If you don't look into the mirror, and she God. To see him is his son, the rock my son. Today I have begotten thee. And as you're told, and if scholars are not convinced that the second soul is that of David, but read the fourth chapter of the book of Acts. And you say, O oh, sovereign Lord, creator of the heavens and the earth and the seas and all their in, who by the mouth of our father David, thy son, did say that he quote the second song. If you want any confirmation as to who actually wrote that second song, read the first chapter of the book of Acts, which is written by the father of the book of Luke. And in the book of Luke, you read the word in the 20th chapter. Why does David in the spirit call him Lord? If David does call him Lord, how could he be David's son? For in calling him Lord, he confessed he was his father, not his son. And now this is written by the son. As told us in the fourth chapter of Acts, 
I'm first revealed in the second chapter of the book of Saul. And I will tell of the decree of the Lord. He said unto me, Thou art my son. Today I have begotten thee. So here the drama is really in you. The whole drama is in every individual in this world. And it simply only unfolds in man. And when it unfolds in man, what in this world is worth more than the unfolding of the drama in you? If you found the whole vast world, you wouldn't leave it. For this would all vanish anyway. So what does it matter if you own the whole thing? <laughs> but one thing they can't take from it is the being that you really are, that essential being is God. But if you don't know it, well then, it's but a fabulous fortune of which you are totally unaware. Therefore, it is not existent. It means nothing to you if you're totally unaware. But when you are aware through the Son that you follow God the Father, then you are set free. For if the Son sets you free, you are free indeed. So he said, I will be with you a little longer. And then I go to him who sent me. Yet he who sent me has never left me. He and I are one. O oh, you show us, O oh, Lord, show us the Father. I have been so long with you, and yet you do not know me, Philip. He who had seen me has seen the brother. If you see me. But then who are you who is speaking? At one moment, if you read scripture properly, he is speaking in the capacity of the son, therefore David. At another moment, he is speaking in the capacity of father, and therefore it is the invisible spirit speak. But no one has ever seen him. Who could say he has seen him? Until you see a few spirits, you can't see him here. All the demand. The front convert could ever look like him. No. You will know exactly who you are when you see David. Because the father and the son are one. And you will actually see any David. What you, what pure, must be. And then I know at the same place into whose body I was incorporated or is the image but your David of David. And so they embraced me, and we became one body, one spirit. And then I was sent into the world. From that moment on, though I still looked like Neville, the Neville that was before, and still look like that in Neville now, it is that me into whose body I was incorporated, and with whose spirit I became one, that David recognized and called me father. For he who is united to the Lord becomes one spirit with it. And so there is only one being resurrected. So the resurrection is not a favor, it is taking place. And for these faith to Timothy, there are those who preach the resurrection as fair. They are misleading people, and turning them from the faith. As he came into his letter to Timothy, because he said, The time for my departure has come. I have finished the good words. Well, now you must tell Timothy not to fall into that trap and teach that the resurrection is over. It has begun, but it is taking place in everyone and must take place in everyone. So the Christ of whom he spoke is that universal Christ that is buried in everyone. And in everyone, but in the victory, he must rise. And the same pattern for gold in Scripture, by which he wrote, must take place in man. He came out of one place where he was buried, and there's only one place, and in his name, Carl. Note, does not minimize the word, now that it's John. Even though he will give you the word Golgotha, you'll translate the word Golgotha. Golgotha means Carl in Hebrew. But in some translations, they don't even give you the Hebrew word. They say, and he was crucified and buried on Golgotha. So there's only one place you're ever going to rise, and you aren't going to rise you fall it's long. You're going to rise out of your own wonderful skull while you're walking the earth. That's where you're going to rise. Save your money if you're planning any little plot to bury the little body, for you aren't going to rise there. In fact, you will never be taken there. Let them destroy this body, let them turn it, turn it into ash. It means nothing. You will still be in that immortal skull where you were buried in the beginning. And from that skull, you're going to rise. And all the imagery of scripture will surround you when you rise. 
and they will come this wonderful unfolding pattern for the only one pattern that must repeat itself through the indwelling in man of Jesus Christ. Were he not enough, then he could not repeat the Dharma. But the same thing is told in the Gospel, that same Dharma unfolds itself in the individual. And he is the Lord, who is the Father of the only Son, and that Son is deity. So when you read the story, if you have a concordance, and I recommend that you don't have one, and you claim ever to get one, the best that I know of is strong. Strong concordance. It's exhaustive. It has every word, not by the metaphysical concordance, and not the metaphysical dictionary of these things. They're all, well, speculation. This is simply the original count. Translated in the original meaning of the word used when it was first put into the scroll. Now, you can take from this many definitions, for instance, took tonight, the word see. For well, one definition given in concordance, in Strong's concordance, is to show self, to experience. Well, to experience saving is to see. But you must experience it. Not hear it say, it must be an experience. So that is to see. And so he who sees the Son, then knows the Father. If you knew me, you would have known my father. And yet I and my father are one. So, to experience David is to know God. And you know God as the father of the one that you are now looking at. And the one looking at him is yourself. And you feel that father-son relief. Now, that is completely in conflict with the whole vast Christian world concerning the story of Jesus Christ. And yet I've been fact to tell it. Tell it not as hearsay, but tell it as it's free. And so I've carried it with me. And not he privately could ever deny it. Because you're going to have it just as I have killed him. You're not going to bury it at all, because there's only one pattern, and that pattern will unfold within you. And when it unfolds within you, you will be part of this world that he is a police state. And mainly I will think you there giving the sumptuous dinner party not more than eight, and eight is the number of resurrection. There were six gifts, and six is the number of man, and eight is the number of resurrection, so the six, which is man, now will be set free. So here the sumptuous, wonderful dinner, and not one can fail, because as I am telling them the way of escape, they were at that very moment already at their destination. So not one who came to search the house could ever find one of my gifts. And as they came, the butler <laughs> announced the office of hair, and out my guests would go behind the tapestries and the panel wall into their quarters. And then that very night, always the night of the banquet, they escaped. And that was the vision. So I tell you it's a true vision. To bring it back, and you know that you just strange he now. I knew them when I was there in the vision. But on waking, you were the only one that I really knew. The other was there for a purpose. And you were playing a part that came from above. For the whole thing was organized and dictated and controlled from above. And there you sat and explained the procedure of departure. And yet, as you told them, they were already at their death range. So no one could have found them anyway. But they went through the means of searching the house. And they came several times to the interval, always at the end of a flight quick. They got get. They were always sick. They led. And they were dead free from this police state, or this whole vast world, whether it's behind the Iron Curtain, or outside of the Iron Curtain, we are still in a police state. The whole thing. And if an escape from this world, this state, into that age, where I played the part of the gateway, explaining how it's done. Well, I'm explaining it now to you, how it's done. You are here dreaming the dream of life. And the day will come, and come suddenly, like a thief in the night, no morning. You will have adumbrations that like my prey, with the world coming to an end, and the whole thing is taking faith around me. 
you would have an adumbration like that or something similar. But the actual thing where it does happen will take place all within your skull. And a vibration that you think or you will interpret it to be fire. You wonder how you could ever survive what is taking place now. And then instead of dying, you awake for the first time which you can ever remember, a true awakening. And you are awake to find that you really are in Golda. And that's where you are. And then you know at that moment what is taking place. And you come right out to find the wise one's prayer. And they they find the infant child, just as you're told. And a scripture tells you what people skip over the word sky. And this shall be a sign and the youth. But you go to church that's coming Christian, and they'll have the little sign where they don't call it a sign. They call that the fact. And the people will bow before the little child. The child is only the sign of your medium. You were the one who awoke. You were the one who were born from above. And you are the one of whom the evangelist wrote. That Christ seeing you is the one of whom they speak. And the whole thing is told there is your experience, and the whole story is your story. But as you read it, and as it's inherited by the, those who talk from the pulpit, you will never know it. And they wonder why they're still so confused today. He will go on and on and on, until actually man comes to the truth of it all. And he comes to it from within himself. But to go back, if you have the concordance, don't take anything for granted. Just simply turn to the word, look it up. You need not know one word of Greek or one word of Hebrew. It gives you a number. You look up the number. If it is the Old Testament, you look up the section under the Old Testament. For definition, if it is in the New, you turn to the Greek. And you look it up under the Greek. And it takes the number. It will show you the Greek word and the pronunciation of the word. But you need not bother with that. Look up the number, then take the definition as did when you not in Greek. It defines it in your own tongue, in English. And you will see how many definitions of the thing, one simple word are there, and why that shows the one that they did. So, blessed are the pure in heart, or they shall see God. And the pure in heart is simply the consequence not the condition of seeing God. Seeing God produces automatically, instantly, the pure heart, which is nothing more than the purging of the mind, of fall belief in secondary cause, carrying the mind of fall obstruction, leaving you completely alone, that God is all that there is, and fall is God. Now let us go into the silence. Another friend who was here tonight, he says he heard a voice, didn't see anyone, saw nothing, just the boy. And the boy said to her, you will be called and sent, and you will not return. You will be sent in two. Well, that's good. You will be sent while you are here. You have a long time here, but you will not return, not only here but return to this age, whether it's beyond the so-called grave or not. You will not return to this world, terrestrial world. But you'll be paid to pay us, for you told that in Scripture. And they came back to the 70, but they're all sent out in two. Mm -hmm.